Welcome to Stable Sword. In this episode, we're going to discuss rolling hashes. <coughs> okay, not that kind of hash. A rolling hash algorithm for string searching. We'll derive a concrete implementation of it and show how it could be used to efficiently find a string inside of a text. Suppose we have some long text and we want to find out if our pattern string is in this text. The brute force way of doing this will be to compare the first character of the two strings. If it matches, then compare the second character and so on until either all of the characters match or there's a mismatch. In case of a mismatch, the sliding window is moved down one, while the pattern string pointer is reset back to the first character and the process repeats. This is painfully inefficient, in particular when the pattern string is long and the mismatch happens towards its end. <coughs> what about this idea? What if we were to calculate the hash of the pattern string and then compare it to the hash of the sliding window? Comparing if the hash values match is a very quick operation, since we just check if the two numbers are equal. Most of the time, the hash values won't match and we just keep on moving the sliding window down. It's only in the rare cases of hash values matching do we then go through and compare each character the brute force way. The trick then is to calculate the hash of the sliding window without having to iterate over each of its characters every single time. This is where the rolling hash comes in. It takes the hash of the previous window and adjusts it a little to accommodate for the character that was pushed out. The simplest implementation of such a hash function could just add up each character's numeric representation, be it the ASCII or some other encoding. To make this example more readable, instead of using actual ASCII encoding values, let's assume that letter A is encoded by number 1, letter B by number 2, and so on. We'll first calculate the hash value of the pattern string, CDEF, just by adding up each character's encoding value. We do the same for the first position of the sliding window, A, B, C, D. From that point on, however, the previously calculated hash value is reused. We subtract the character that's no longer inside the window and add in the new character on the right. The main benefit here is that regardless of the length of the search pattern, we do a constant number of operations to find the next hash value. So that's the concept behind the rolling hash and the search algorithm that makes use of it was invented by Michael Rabin and Richard Karp in 1987. If the length of text is t and the length of the pattern string is p, then the expected running time of the search algorithm is order t plus p, assuming that the hash function produces very few collisions. However, in a worst case scenario, when there are collisions every step of the way, the running time would be order t multiplied by p, which is no better than the brute force way of doing things. Our function in particular is rather terrible. Just summing up the character encodings would imply that the string ABCD as well as its reverse DCBA or any of its permutations would map to the exactly the same hash value. Let's try to fix this so that the order of each character matters. We could signify the position of each character by multiplying it by some constant raised to the power that corresponds to its position. In this example, the multiplier constant is set to 10 to make it more readable. But if you'd like to have no hash value collisions at all, then pick the multiplier to be greater than the largest value in the alphabet. Since the string is of length 4, the first character is multiplied by 10 to the power of 3, the second character is multiplied by 10 to the power of 2, and so on. You can see how the hash value for string ABCD ends up being 1234. The reverse string would get a completely different value of 4321. Thus the problem of frequent collisions is now solved. So now, when computing the next hash value, the rolling hash function would subtract the first character multiplied by 10 to the power of 3 from the previously calculated hash, then multiply all of the terms by 10 and then add the new character. You may be thinking that if you have a pattern string of length 100, 
then the rightmost character would have a multiplier raised to the power of 99. The problem of integer overflows come to mind when dealing with values that are greater than the number of atoms in the observable universe. We'd have to resort to modular arithmetic to reduce the hash value at the expense of increasing the rate of hash value collisions. From our previous example, the hash value of string ABCD is 1234, which in modulo 113 results in 104. In this example, we use modulo of a prime number, 113, so the final resulting hash value will always be less than 113. You can adjust the magnitude of this number to achieve acceptable rate of collisions. Now, when calculating the next hash value, we do the same thing, but apply mod operation every step of the way. We can do a sanity check and calculate the hash value of string BCDE without the use of previous hash value. Sure enough, we get the same answer. Okay, so the final hash values are reduced by the mod operator. But what about the 10 cubed and 10 squared from our example? For that, we can make use of this property of modulo multiplication. A multiplied by B mod C is the same as mod C of A mod C multiplied by B mod C. Thus, 10 squared mod 113 could be rewritten like so. Notice that the formula does not involve any large numbers. This means we can easily calculate a constant raised to any power, such as 10 to the power of 99, without ever hitting large numbers in a loop like this. There are other algorithms that perform better when searching for a single term, such as the KMP, newt morris Pratt and the Boyer Moore, both of which we'll discuss in a future episode. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please click that like button. Also, for the full source code, please see the link in the description. And remember to always roll your hash responsibly.